Hi, I'm Laurel, and this is my final video. So I want to give you guys a uh, update for what I've done since the previous video. So once I got my EKG to work on the breadboard, I went on to making my oscilloscope. And so I, it came in a kit, and I put all the different uh, components in. Um, I soldered them all in and then assembled the oscilloscope itself. Um, and from there, I went to test it. However, it, it didn't work. At first, the screen didn't light up, but um, I found that by turning the potentiometer here, I could change the contrast of the screen. So that allowed the different buttons, uh, or the different digital components of the screen to show up. However, the oscilloscope would still not recognize signal. So uh, that involved a lot of troubleshooting on my part to figure out why it wasn't working. I went through and checked the orientation of the parts. I used a, a multimeter to check connections um, and make sure they are how they should be. Um, I did notice that the PCB provided itself was missing some parts. Um, so I went to go attach the parts that were needed, as you can see here. However, that still didn't solve the problem of the oscilloscope not recognizing signals. Uh, and it turns out that the kit itself was also um, sent with uh, assembly instructions that weren't updated, uh, which made it a very large problem um, on how to assemble it properly. So right now I'm waiting for a new kit to come in the mail from a different manufacturer uh, so I can still get an oscilloscope to work because right now this thing um, was inherently doomed to not work. So um, while I wait for that, I went on to um, transfer my EKG from a breadboard to a perf board and a perf board allows the project to be more compact, more professional. Um, and as you can see here, you're soldering the parts together with little, um, just from little hole to hole. Um, and so I went through and transferred each part from the breadboard to the perf board. And once they were all assembled, I went to test it. And with my luck, it didn't work. So I went through troubleshooting how I did with the oscilloscope, checking connections, um, and using the schematic to make sure the parts um, themselves were put in the correct orientation, the correct order, um, and everything appeared fine. So I later figured out that it might be a ground problem. So I, um, and it's really hard to create a ground on a perf board because it involves stretching out solder for um, many different holes. So I moved ground to a different spot, making it slimmer and uh, using a wire to attach it all together. However, that still didn't solve the problem. So in the future, I plan to use these sockets um, and solder them in um, and then attach the ground wires to the female openings here. Um, and hopefully that will ensure that ground is connected how it should be. Um, another problem that I think is causing the, um, my project to not work is that there's too much solder. Um, and I learned that when you have too much solder, um, there, it can cause resistance between the two parts, which is actually really bad for the project as a whole. Um, so I plan to go back and try to take off the solder, and if that still doesn't solve the problem, um, transfer it possibly to a PCB or do it again on a perf board where I can control them out of um, solder being applied to each pin. Um, so all, all in all, I learned uh, that in engineering, it is rare that things um, work the first time. It's really about perseverance, making sure that, um, that in the end you're leaving with a, a complete project. So um, even though Blue Stamp is ending my project doesn't end there, I'm waiting for all my kits and I'm really excited about um, troubleshooting to make things work properly. Um, it's been a great learning experience. and. Um, I think troubleshooting is like a very important principle to engineering, so I'm excited to do that in the future. Thank you.